So, so far all the work we've been doing on vectors has been graphical. We've been drawing arrows and sticking arrows together and it's it's been good but it's fairly unwieldy because we can't really do a bunch of high level maths with that. So being able to talk about vectors in component form will allow us to get a bit algebraic with it. So um, let's draw one of our vectors, so I'll call that vector u. Um, now let's put a Cartesian plane here. Now, it's going to be useful for us. I've said before that vectors don't have a starting position, and that's true, but I'm going to say that it's going to be useful for us if we just take this vector and move it so that its um, tail is at the origin. So I'm just going to pick it up and move it over here, and now call that u. Okay, um, let's tidy this up. So, now that I've got a vector sitting on a Cartesian plane with its uh, starting point at the origin, what I'm going to do is call, um, if, the, if this is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, on a Cartesian plane, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, on my y-axis of my Cartesian plane, I'm going to draw a vector um, just from here to here. And I'm going to call that vector i. And so vector i, you can see, has a magnitude of 1, and it's going in the direction of the x-axis. And I'm going to draw another vector here, and I'm going to call that vector uh, j, using my little squiggly lines here. And that has a magnitude of 1, it's a length of 1, and it's moving directly up. So now what I can do, and this is the cool bit that's going to let us do a bunch of algebra, is... I can say that this particular vector is 1, 2, 3, let's say 3 and a half, 3 and a half i's this way. So 3.5 i. And then I can add on 1, 2, 3, let's make it 4. I can add on, uh, so that's. 3.5i, and that's uh, 4j. And so by creating these i and j vectors, I can now talk about u in what's called component form. u, the vector u, is equal to 3.5i in the x direction, because i will always go in the x direction, plus 4j, 4 in the, in the y component there. Okay, um, It's a really, really useful tool to have because it's going to let us do a bunch of cool stuff. So, all component form does is take a, a, a vector that's on an angle and allow us to talk about it in terms of how far across do you have to walk and how far up do you have to walk. Uh, let's do one more just so we've got we can look really across this. If I were to do a vector that looked more like that, I just draw a Cartesian plane. Uh, not dotted lines, let's do a pop line. Whoa. So here's my Cartesian plane. Now, this time, let's call this vector V. It's pretty clear that V is moving this direction here. So I can say that that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It looks like it's moving negative 5 in the J component, negative 5 across, and I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 6. Oh, that's the I component, sorry. That's going to confuse you. Negative 5 in the I component, and positive 6 in the J component. All right, so I components move from left to right along the x-axis. J components move up and down along the um, y-coordinate. Now, if you'll remember, we also did vectors in 3D. Now I'm going to rub all that off and do some 3D stuff. So in order for us to do 3D stuff, I'm just going to sort of rotate the x and the y-coordinate and then create a third axis, or the x and the y-axis, and then create a third axis called the z-axis. 
So rather than having the y-axis move up like I have previously, I'm going to have my y-axis moving in that direction. Okay, that's my y-axis. Now I'm rotating this around and my x-axis is going to come, it's actually coming out of the page. It's coming out. That's my x-axis. Um, which means that the, the Cartesian plane that you're used to, if you sort of you sort of rotate it and look at it like flat on the page, it's um, that's the x and the y axis that you used to see. Now, the z axis, we're going to do straight up. Now, in terms of, um, uh, of vectors, this is going to be my i component, and this is going to be my j component, and this is going to be my k component. So, if a uh, vector were to move uh, three units out of the page along the x-axis, and two units over here, and four units over here, so three, two, four, it ends up kind of here, but you need to be careful how that looks. It's come out, out one, two, three, it's gone across two, one, two, one, two, yep, uh, maybe three, and it's gone up, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so now, I know that's hard to visualise, but you've got to sort of see it coming out and across and up. Uh, now we can say that that particular vector is... Uh, it's moved, so that vector is moving from the origin to that point there, sort of out of the page a little bit. So we'll call it vector v, and we'll say that vector v is 3 in the i direction, 3 along the x-axis, plus 3 in the j-axis, uh, plus 5 in the k or the z axis. Okay, so we can you work in three dimensions. Now, once we start moving past here, this is sort of past high school maths, but you can start moving into um, theoretical dimensions. We can start having further and further and further um, dimensions as well outside of those three dimensions. But for now, two dimensions, i and j components, three dimensions, i, j, and K components. Done.